good day, subscribers. Today is episode two of Semester Two, Proctor Track. If you'd like to see the previous episode before watching this one, click the banner in the upper right hand corner. In the last episode, we talked about CS7637, Knowledge-Based AI. We went through the assignments and the grading, looking at the homeworks, the projects, and the exam. So, as I'm sure you guys can tell, there's a new feature to the videos now, which is I got a video camera. So that's going to be a little bit of what we talk about today in the video, but with the video camera, I'm going to be now here in the corner, uh, and I'll be able to follow along with you guys. So as always, I wanna make sure I thank my subscribers out there. Thank you guys so much for being with me. I really love making the videos and sharing this information with you, but it's so much more fun when I have you guys to interact with and when you comment and when you like the videos, it really just encourages me to keep going. This week's comic is about HTML and how some people don't like it as a programming language. In this video, we're gonna be talking about ProctorTrack. So first of all, what is ProctorTrack? ProctorTrack is a software that some Georgia Tech classes use to monitor you while you're taking the exams. And specifically, it's what my class this summer is using to monitor during the exams. So what are the pros? Well, the good things about it are, first of all, it does put all of your tests in one easy place to find, which is kind of a nice feature. So you go onto the ProctorTrack website and it's got all of your tests lined up so you can see each test kind of when it's allowed to be taken, when it's due, which is nice because then you can kind of schedule yourself a little bit better. And two, it protects against uh, collaboration or whatever kind of rules your class sets up. If you're not allowed to use notes, it protects against any student using notes, which is nice to know that everybody's kind of on an even playing field. Now, what are the cons? So personally, I find the cons to be a little bit more extensive than the pros. I'm not a big fan of this software. Um, one of the things that I really don't like about it is that it doesn't allow multiple monitors. So my class right now, uh, you're allowed to use Notes, you're allowed to use Google, you're allowed to really use anything. Um, you're just not allowed to talk to another student. And for my setup, I have three big 24 inch uh, screens and I really like using them for test taking and that kind of stuff because I'll have like the test on one screen, Google on this screen and maybe my notes on the other screen and it's just really easy to monitor through them and kind of like find whatever note I need on this side, answer the question and go through. Um, but when ProctorTrack shuts out those other monitors, it really makes it difficult for me to get through the test and it did make me feel like I did worse than I could have. Second, a camera is required to use this software. So I had to use the, the camera that's on my laptop before I bought this one. Um, and that's just kind of like Another small annoying thing, kind of thinking that somebody's watching you, but it is what it is. I think it might come along with just doing an online course. And then third and last, um, the Proctor Track software is kind of hard to navigate through. So when I was taking a test on Canvas, which is the way tests were taken in the class I took before, um, which is computational photography, you could scroll all the way up, scroll all the way down, and each question was in that one scroll. So it was all on one page. In the ProctorTrack software, each question kind of has its own page, and you have to go next or back to get to the previous or the next question, which just makes it a little bit harder to like check your previous work once you finish the test and you want to go back and maybe your, your test is out of 20 questions and you want to go back to question three. You have to click the back button 17 times, which is kind of a pain in the neck. So... Now, I would love to show you guys the ProctorTrack software, but when I tried to do it, I wasn't able to because the software kept shutting down my camera because it wasn't allowing me to use my camera for the ProctorTrack software and also to record these videos. Um, it was also making it really difficult for me to take screenshots, but I was able to get a few, so let's take a look at that. All right, so here we have the ProctorTrack software. As you guys can see, on the upper left-hand corner, you can see me kind of showing each side of my face. For some reason, um, before you can start actually taking the test, the ProctorTrack software has you go through these couple of steps. And so the first step they have you do 
is they have you show the front of your face, the side of your face, and then the other side of your face. Um, my guess is that this is to have the camera be able to kind of recognize if you had somebody over there or something you weren't supposed to be looking at over there, they'd be able to tell what it looked like when you were facing that direction. Uh, second, they have you show your photo ID. This one I think is pretty obvious. They want to make sure the person taking the test is the person who's supposed to be taking the test. So if I show my ID and it's obviously not a picture of me, then they know that I'm not the one taking the test and somebody else is taking the test for me. And then third, they have you do this, and I have no reason why they have you do this. If any of you guys know, please comment and let me know because it, it doesn't make any sense to me. On the right-hand side, you guys can see what the software actually looks like. So this is what the Proctor Track testing looks like. So it's got the question kind of in the top. It's got the time counter in the upper right hand corner, and then it's got your list of options for answers, and then the number of questions on the side, and then on the bottom it's got where it says submit, it would be next when you had multiple questions. Um, like I said, this kind of makes it a little bit difficult to move back and forth through the questions. So like I said, if you had 20 questions on your test, you get to question 20, you finish it, you want to go back to question 3, you got to click back 17 times, which makes it a little bit uh, difficult to navigate through, especially if you don't remember, like, was the question I wanted to go back to uh, question three or question five or question four? You got to kind of find it. Um, I found this way easier in the Canvas software, but apparently a couple classes use this ProctorTrack software, and so it's just part of the program. It'll be interesting to see if this class continues to use it after the poor feedback that was received by the class. Thank you all for watching. If you have any comments or video requests, let me know in the comment section. Also, if you guys liked me being in the corner over here, or if you found it difficult to concentrate on the slides while I was going through, also let me know that. And lastly, uh, I'm right now I'm wearing the official Georgia Tech OMS CS student t-shirt. They send this out to all OMS CS students. So thank you very much, Georgia Tech. I'm not sponsored, but if you want to, I'll take it. Um, other than that, again, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. Thanks, and subscribe.